So this video is part of a series of videos covering the construction of our timber frame sauna. In the last video, I think I covered making these cedar benches. In this video, we'll move out into the change room. And in this video, we'll cover the making of this frame and panel cedar chest that we use for storing towels in the sauna. As with pretty much any project I build, I start by designing in SketchUp. Uh, this is a fairly simple frame and panel style cedar chest. I've just hidden the lid so you can see some of the construction details. If I hide one of these legs, you can see that the chest is put together simple rails and styles that have uh, grooves cut in the edges to hold the panels. And then on the end of the longer rails, I have extended tenons that fit into the legs uh, for strength. The center styles, if I hide the rail, just have a little simple stub tenon that fits in the groove, Doesn't, don't need a lot of strength there. And as always, when I've got my design done and I'm ready to go down to the shop, I use the cut list extension to write out a CSV file for all of the parts that I want to make. I then bring that CSV file into a Google Doc, do a little bit of editing, and I either print it out and take it down to the shop or just take a tablet down to the shop. And if you're interested in the process I use for designing with SketchUp, I'll include a link in the card above. But now we'll just go down to the shop and start cutting some wood. For this piece, I'm using Eastern White Cedar that I had left over from the rest of the sauna project. I start by resawing some of the thicker material which I will then plane down to half an inch thick. I then book match the resulting boards and edge glue them to form wider boards that I'll use for the pan. Then while the glue on the panels is drying, I just work my way through my cut list and cut the remaining parts to size. Once I had all the parts dimensioned, I then start cutting the joinery. I first cut the shoulders of the tenons using a sled on my table saw with a stop block to ensure a consistent tenon length. After completing the shoulder cuts, I switched to a stacked dado head cutter and cut a quarter inch wide groove three eighths of an inch deep in the legs, rails, and styles. I then cut the tenon cheeks using a tenon ding jig on my table saw. It's a good idea to create a test cut on a piece of scrap cut from the same thickness material as your main parts so that you can dial in the tenon thickness to match the groove cut previously. Once you've got the thickness dialed in, the tenon cutter makes quick work of completing all the cheek cuts. At the end of each of the long rails, we're creating a haunched tenon. We leave 3 eighths of an inch stub to fill the groove cut in the leg and then cut that back 3 quarters of an inch to prevent the mortise from splitting at the end of the leg. I then lay out the parts in the desired orientation using a little spacer block to ensure consistent spacing at the bottom of the leg. I then mark the location of the mortises using the existing tenons and then transfer the marks from one leg to all of the other legs. The 
The mortises I cut using a quarter inch carbide spiral cutting straight bit mounted in my router table. The lines I'm marking on the table here just indicate the edges of the bit. I then hold the workpiece tight against the fence and drop it down into the bit, lining up one mark defining the end of the mortise with the line drawn on the table. I then feed the workpiece until the other line aligns with the other mark on the table. When feeding the workpiece, it's really important to feed it in a direction such that the cutter is pushing the workpiece against the fence as you feed it. Since the tenons on the rails intersect each other inside the leg mortises, we need to cut a 45 degree miter on the end of each tenon. So with the glue on the panels now dry, I can take those out of the clamps and clean up the squeeze out using a cabinet scraper. Then I cut the panels to size using my large panel cutter on the table saw. Since the panels are a half an inch thick and they're going into a quarter inch groove, I've got to remove some material with a core box cove bit to create a raised panel. Now I'm going to show the smooth panel on the outside of the cedar chest here. The raised portion will be positioned inside the box. After confirming the fit with a test piece, I then cut the panels. When cutting these, cut in the direction of the grain first and then cut the end grain. This will minimize any tear out as the bit comes through the workpiece. When building with frame and panel, it's always a good idea to sand the panels before assembly. And actually, if you're gonna finish the piece, it's a good idea to put at least one coat of your finish on before assembly as well. That way when the parts move seasonally, you won't expose an unfinished line at the edge of the panel. For the cedar chest, I originally intended to leave it unfinished, so I won't apply any finish here. I chamfered the edges of all of the pieces lightly using a block plane before assembly. Because of the number of parts, this is a fairly challenging glue up. I used a glue brush and applied Tight Bond 2 wood glue to each of the tenons and in the mortises. I then clamped up each of the side panels as a sub-assembly and set those aside until the glue had set. With the side panels done, I could then tackle the end panels. By the time I was done, I had used up pretty much every one of my Bessie Parallel Jaw clamps. I'm a big fan of these clamps, but they're not cheap. I was lucky enough to find a large set used on Facebook Marketplace. Since I'd cut the grooves on the legs all the way through, I had a small area to fill near the bottom of each leg. I could have used stopped grooves, but they're a lot more work, and these little filler blocks are fairly easy to make. Plus they're hidden, located on the bottom inside face of each leg. With the basic box made, I next installed some small rails to support the bottom of the cedar chest. Those were attached using glue and brads.
for the box bottom, I used some shiplap slats made from aromatic red seed. The top of the box was made from one and a quarter inch thick white cedar, which I edge glued and used some biscuits for alignment during glue up. So that'll wrap things up for this video. As always, if you enjoyed it, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.